October is here with the new 40,000 gem giveaway. Five lucky winners will each win 8,000 gems. Any platform can win. Enter in the description down below. Hello, everybody. We are here with your Osiris guide. We'll be playing Osiris over in the solo lane. He's probably equally as good uh, in the solo lane right now as he is in the jungle, uh, which is to say that Osiris is pretty okay at both. So we're going to be grabbing ourselves a Warrior's Blessing, as well as a Tier 1 Boot, and our Chalice of Healing. For our active slot, our intention is going to be to grab a Teleport, which means we're not actually going to grab an active at all here at the start, and we'll get it when we back to the base for the first time, leaving us the option of grabbing a different active if it turns out that we didn't need the Teleport. No harm, no foul. For Osiris, I'm going to be starting off with my two for the lane clear. I'm going to be starting over in the lane. About to meet my friend Kakullin over here as well. Let's see if I can't throw down a little, get a little Warrior's Blessing proc right there. Get that started on up. Osiris is a uh, kind of a hybrid warrior. He's got uh, an auto attack chain. He's got ability base as well. Um, so he's got some pretty decent options as far as uh, builds go. You can bring him a little bit more ability, a little bit more auto attacky, as well as tanks. So you can't super build Osiris wrong as long as you are giving him uh, some defenses. I'm not going to make it back to the blue in time. That's fine. I'm just going to sit here for the wave clear then. Oh, we looked cleared that really fast. That is fine. So for our abilities, we've got our two. This is our spirit flail. This is going to be a medium sized circle ability. And after a very small delay, you will do damage inside of the area and you will gain movement speed as well, as long as you hit some targets. So I get a little bit of damage off in the circle. I get some bonus movement speed. For a couple of seconds. So we get a 20% movement speed buff for three seconds and some damage and this ability will interact with our one, which we will be grabbing here at level two. One, a key part of our in lane poke. So on Osiris, something that you're going to be doing a lot is spamming your one and using your abilities as auto attack cancels which I did a lot in that little engagement right there. What that means is that Osiris has this auto attack chain that we talked about a little bit earlier. 0 0.51, 0 0.51 on his attack chain and his last two attacks are AOE, which helps you with your lane clear. I'm actually gonna back up right here and use my teleport to come back in, get that nice chalice refresh. And so oftentimes on Osiris, what you're gonna do is you're gonna auto attack twice, and then you're gonna use an ability and just kind of restart over that auto attack chain, factoring in your abilities right there in the middle. So you oftentimes go one, two, when you're fighting somebody ability, one, two, ability, one, two, ability. And this is gonna give you a nice combination of being able to actually get the damage off from your abilities, as well as your auto attacks. This is mostly used when you're fighting enemy gods, although it can be used for things like creeps as well. So back into our abilities, our level one is a really low cooldown, sickle throw. It's only on a five second cooldown. You can see 4.5. It does a little bit of damage, but most importantly, it is a slow. So this is a slow for three seconds, uh, which is quite nice. And so as long as you hit it, bada bing, bada boom, you get that nice little slow. Nice rotation from Oelix and Nua Ulti as well. And it interacts with our two. The way that it interacts with our two is that if you have the slow on them from Sickle Strike and you hit the enemy with a Spirit Flail, it is going to increase that slow from the 20% Sickle Strike to a 40% slow. And it's also going to refresh that slow timer. 
So you can theoretically slow somebody with your one, wait a couple of seconds, then throw down the two, and then it'll slow them again. And you can get that slow upwards near the six second marker, probably more so near the five second marker. By that time, your one is basically back up again, so you can keep them permanently slowed. Osiris got a lot of slow action in his kit. The ability that we got at level four is our tether. Tether is an area around us. It's a pretty uh, decent sized circle. I think I've got it on, no, I don't have it on instant cast. So I can show you pretty large circle. And what that tether is going to do is anybody that has that tether on them is going to be doing reduced damage. Uh, that damage reduction, uh, the way that it works, um, uh, is people can walk out of the tether range. Uh, so you've got to keep them inside basically the circle range If people walk outside of the tether range and that ability will just kind of end on them But if you keep them inside the tether range, they will be stunned at the end of four seconds Ooh, there he goes right there. They will be stunned at the end of the uh, duration of the ability which is four seconds and they will get stunned for 1.4 seconds So oftentimes how you're going to use this ability is you're literally gonna just kind of hold down the W key. And you are just going to, you know what? Let's do a little fun, let's do a, let's do a little auto attack to style build over here. This will be fun. We'll grab a couple of wards as well. So you're gonna typically go right into combat. You're gonna try to get around everybody. You're gonna pop your three, get that damage reduction on them, and then hopefully get a squishy or two with the stun. Then we have our ultimate ability. This is the only uh, actual movement ability on Osiris. It is a leap, so you can use it over walls. It is also CC immune, so you can't be like a Wheelix pulled out of this because it is your ultimate. When you land at the target location, it's a fairly small circle uh, that you're using on your ulti, but if you land on that target location, anybody inside of that range is going to take some damage. They are going to be rooted for just a moment. It's a real quick root, 0.4 seconds. And then they will have 100% anti-healing on them for six seconds, which is really the big purpose of this ability is that big fat anti-heal. I'm gonna walk right at this boy, hit him with the slow. Now that he's slow, I'm gonna just go ahead and put my tether on him. Try to keep him in that tether range. That way I can get a little bit more poke on him at the end of it. Boop. Just keep poking him out. On Osiris, he's kind of a lane bully. He's not as much of a lane bully as he used to be uh, because of some item changes as well as some new gods in the game that do the lane bullying a bit better. Uh, but one of your big things that you're trying to do is kind of consistently walk at the enemy solo laner and just get a lot of poke damage on them. You can make those trades pretty good for you by utilizing your tether aggressively. It'll help make your trades a little bit better uh, because you get that damage reduction on the enemy the entire time while you're fighting or you force them to kind of just run away while the tether is on you, in which case you're poking them and they're not getting anything in return. Finally, Osiris' ultimate. Osiris has got a decently complicated ultimate. And so you can see right now we are one out of eight. When I use an ability, I'm going to be two out of eight. And so this is going to go for all of my abilities. It is going to increase this number. And if you pay attention to my character, I actually don't know how much it really shows in this skin. It does. Uh, you can start to see that my character will look different as well. So this passive actually factors in to Osiris's uh, lore. And that is fragmented. Every time you use an ability on Osiris, you become a little bit more fragmented. And this is a good thing. What that means for us is every time we use an ability up to eight, we're losing a body part. Because we're losing a body part, we are gaining physical and magical damage mitigation. 2% physical damage mitigation per stack. And 1% magical uh, mitigation per missing fragment. So because it's up to eight, that means up to 16% physical and 8% magical. Also, when we get all the way fully stacked up to eight, we will also uh, begin to lose our basic attack penalty. 
And so we start to get a little bit tankier as we use abilities. I don't have to like hit a minion or anything. I can just like spam abilities and this will increase this. So I'm literally just gaining uh, damage mitigation just by pressing my abilities. Um, and then once you get it all the way stacked, you will have six autos. You will have six autos uh, that basically have the hastened effect on them. Enemy missing. And so this passive can be used to try to catch up to people. So right now you can see if I start auto attacking, I'm not slowing down at all. It will only use these uh, special haste and autos if I actually hit somebody with them. So I can just kind of use them willy nilly. And then the second that I hit something, you will see that it starts to actually take these stacks down. So use them wisely. This is gonna be great for helping you chase down the enemy. So I'm gonna go a slightly more auto attacky build here on Osiris. So I've got my warrior tabai. We've got, or excuse me, I've got our warrior's blessing with our ninja tabai and a berserker shield. Berserker shield, of course, is gonna give me a little bit of defensive here. Uh, now. This is not old school Berserker Shield. Maybe for those of you that haven't played Smite for a little while, you might be thinking that I'm gonna get that Life Seal uh, back on my autos. That is no longer how Berserker Shield works. How it works nowadays. Right after I kill this boy with all of my auto attack damage, you can see why auto attack builds are pretty efficient on Osiris. How it works now is Berserker Shield is going to give you some physical power, some physical defenses. It is also gonna give you attack speed and 10% physical penetration. And then on the passive, it is now going to give you, if you drop below 40% HP, you become Berserk, gaining an additional 20 physical power and 20% attack speed. So while it is still a hybrid item, it leans a little bit more into the offense instead of the defense. I don't mind it as long as you're against a physical solo laner. If I was against like a magical solo laner, I obviously would not get physical defense first. You would get magical defense first. But because I'm against a physical solo laner, I feel very comfortable going a more aggressive build because Berserker Shield is going to give me those physical defenses. On top of the fact that Osiris has so many mitigations already built in. Now for our next item, we are going to get a staple that you see all over the board, support, jungle, solo lane, and that is going to be the sledge. Typically in the solo lane, I want you to get a defense item first that either gives physical or magical defenses depending on what you're laning against. So just make sure you're getting it depending on whatever your lane opponent is. After that, you can tend to go a little bit more general. So I feel free to get a sledge, which is just gonna give me a bunch of HP, which is great. But that HP is gonna help keep me alive a lot. So if we go look over at the sledge for our next item, it is only 2,300 gold. Still gives me 40 physical power. Awesome, a little bit of hybrid item, but 300 health, a little mana and CCR. Plus we get 10 protections per enemy around us up to three enemies. So it also is potentially 30 protection each. But that just depends on how many people we have actually around you in the solo lane. Chances are it's just gonna be you, the solo laner, and the enemy jungler. So you're probably only gonna be getting 20 of those protections until you move a little bit closer to the team fight stage of the game. For our official build order here on Osiris, we level up our ultimate whenever we can. That is going to increase the damage by 100 every time we put a point into it. So make sure you get yourself that ulti whenever you can. You grab your spirit flail whenever you can. This is gonna be a great source of lane clear. Make sure you are utilizing your AOE autos uh, as well for your lane clear. Then we're gonna rank up our one, our single strike. This is gonna be great poke for us in lane. Finally, as you're moving into the team fight stage of the game, you're gonna be leveling up your one. That is going to increase that damage reduction that you get. I was rotating over to the gold fury to make sure that even if they are still later rotated, they had me. And they didn't get anything off that. Looking at their team comp, I should be able to go quite aggressive this game. So I'm going to get a Shield of Thorns. And I'm actually going to wait because I see some action by the mid lane. So I'm going to wait here in the base. I'm going to level up my teleport. And then I'm actually going to teleport near this tier 2 tower in mid. So that way I can come around and try to gank this Kukulin. Doesn't look like Sobek was on the same page as me, but we still might be able to get him. I throw down my two over the wall, which is going to give me 
some bonus movement speed. I'm just gonna sit here and tank this Ymir right to the face. I'm fine. I'm gonna pop my thorns to make sure we get some reflect damage out. See if I can't zone this Kakulin away from that Janus portal so he can't get through. We will be able to. Taking quite a bit of damage, but we're still okay. I got my chalices popping. I'm looking to ult the end. Janus, I know his ulti is down as well as his portal. So I'm just going to go straight for him in the back line. And after all is said and done, we are actually still okay over here. And I'm just going to head back over to my lane and make sure I'm grabbing some more farm. As Osiris, you are, of course, a warrior, meaning that your job in the team fights is to dive into the back line. You are not much of a peeler on Osiris. Uh, you almost have none. Uh, your best peel is really going to be your tether, but that takes four seconds for it to actually get the stun off for peel. So you can throw down your slow and try to peel, uh, but most people won't care about that with their range. Uh, so it's not really your job to keep your new wall alive. Uh, it's not your job to keep your hunter alive. That's going to be on your support. As Osiris, it is your job to go ahead and hold down that W key and get all up in their backliners' faces. Their hunters, their mages, it doesn't matter actually because of your damage reduction. You are going to be naturally a lot, uh, uh, naturally a lot tankier than you would think. This is also another reason why you can get away with building Osiris a little bit more offensive. The rest of my build is still going to be hybrid defensive um, with a little bit of power built in. Uh, but mostly in that hybrid scenario. And the reason why you get away with that is because you've got so many percent mitigations from your passive, plus you've got the damage reduction on your three, meaning that just with those two things combined, you are going to be uh, quite tanky. And so you can get away with going a little bit more damage to try to apply some more pressure while you're already uh, tankier than you have any right to be. I don't believe Kukulin's gonna be able to kill me here, but I am gonna start walking away. He wants to keep the pressure on me. That's fine. My team is shoving up left and mid really, really hard. So at this point in the game, they've got a Yanis and a Ymir as their magical damage. Other than that, they've got three physicals. So no problemo, easy decision for me. I get to go right uh, towards a void shield, give me some more physical protection, some more HP, help bring some pen out for my team. This is gonna help out my Wheelix and my Heim as well as myself with the Aura Pen. Reminder that Aura Pen means as long as they're in that area, their protections are reduced. So it's gonna do that before something like flat pen so you're really increasing the efficacy of your team's penetration and helping out with their damage great item for you to pick up on solo lane warriors as long as the enemy team isn't like super super heavy into magical damage or if their magical damage isn't super far ahead for osiris in his lane matchups his lane matchups typically aren't that big of a problem um, but historically, Osiris has been used to bully out people in the solo lane to try to grab early lane pressure uh, around the map. You can see that we had a pretty decent time in lane against the Kakulin, even though he got a slight XP lead on us. Um, from the start of the game where we didn't get credit for the blue buff, we still ended up being okay because we can just kind of fight into him. Uh, I would be careful about some of the new age solo laners like Cthulhu uh, tends to do very well against you. Uh, I would be a little bit wary of that. Anybody that has built in slow immunities just across the board for Osiris is kind of annoying. Uh, so much of your CC and your kit is based around your one and your two, basically keeping and enhancing slows on people. And if they have built in slow immunities, uh, you're not super able to chase people down. And so this is outside of the laning phase. This is gonna go more so for just generically in the match. Uh, a Mercury, a Kakulkin, whatever. Anybody that has some sort of ability that can just immune all of your slows, for the most part is gonna prevent you from catching up to people because you really utilize those slows to get in range of your tether, to keep them in range of your tether for the stun. And so in general, you do not want to be picking Osiris into heavy movement speed uh, compositions, or excuse me, heavy movement speed immunity compositions. In general, you're looking to pick Osiris um, to one, bully the lane, or two, into healing compositions. So Osiris, uh, standardly, historically, has been used against healers because his ultimate 
has 100% healing reduction on it. This means that as long as you're diving the back line, as you should be as the warrior in the solo laner, you're going to be looking for that healer. It might be a hell, it might be an Aphrodite. Uh, heck, even this game, Cupid, doesn't really matter. As long as you're putting pressure on that back line and you're saving your ulti, and uh, for that healer, you're going to be able to burn down those harder to hit targets. Right now, Ra is super meta right now. Uh, and so Ra's kind of in an interesting spot because now Ra's got movement immunity right on his two. He can undo your slow. But you can also get the anti-heal for him as well as everybody has to group up in his uh, heal, which means you might actually be able to get multiple targets with your ultimate if they're all trying to sit and bathe in his glow so just keep that in mind there's positives and negatives to that matchup but keep your eyes out for those healers when you're playing osiris keep your eyes out for anybody that can't get away from slows this is going to go for uh guys that don't have escape skills at all to just guys that don't have any uh built-in slow immunities yeah they might build like a wing blade against you but honestly if you're playing osiris and you're forcing people to build things like wing blade and get off build that's already a win for you next up we've got a couple of options we can go a little bit more aggressive and do something like a runic shield which is going to give us some magical defenses uh that we need and put us some pressure as well on that janice in the back line nothing wrong ever with a runic shield here and chile doesn't really quite make as much sense for us on osiris we're not really concerned about the cooldown and of course you can go with something straight defensive for your team like a shogun's kusari which is going to help bring out some attack speed for your boys if you had a heavy attack speed comp we don't so i'm actually just going to go a talisman of Energin, which is talisman of energy which is going to give me a bunch of magical defenses a bunch of hp which is going to help even with the physical damage and it's going to help my entire team overall by giving them some movement speed and attack speed which i'll have on the hymen and we looks a little bit but like i said we didn't like go into the shogun's kusari because we're not super in attack speed composition I'm gonna throw down my old uh, my shield of thorns right now which is going to let me do a bunch of reflex i'm gonna ulti myself right into the back line as soon as i see as soon as I saw that Yanis going in the back, and then I can just dive right into their back line. Bada bing, bada boom. So at this point, you can see that I'm a little bit heavier into the physical defense as well. Also being hybrid in nature. I've got the potential bonus 30 protections from the sledge when I am in range of their entire team. And also really focusing on getting a large HP pool. HP pools right now, very important in Smite. Uh, an item that we don't have that is right now that is always a great choice is a stone of gaia stone of gaia going to give you a bunch of hp because you have so much uh hp typically in your builds as well because you're going to have a sled you're going to have shields that are giving you hp it means you're going to get a lot of efficacy out of that stone of gaia passive as well and so you're almost always going to be grabbing that stone of gaia as you move in uh to the late stages of the game, game. typically no earlier than a third item though because you're going to be getting uh, that physical slash magical defense item first for your laning phase and then you're probably going to honestly be getting the sledge as long as you're on a warrior because sledge is so stat efficient as we moved into the late stages of that game of course we were holding down that w key at, at our backline enemies our build was going to continue to be around that hybrid option uh, almost guaranteed that we would have gotten a stone of gaia that game to pair with all of our hp items and then we would have had to continue to look at their team composition so we had 200 physical protections we had the magical protections as well as 3k hp then we had all of the mitigations from our three and our passive because we've got built-in mitigations this also stacks really well if you wanted to go something like a a uh, spirit rope as one of our final items or a oni hunter's garb stacking percent mitigations on top of each other are super efficient now both of those items are almost entirely defense so i wouldn't be getting any offensive stats out of those to do more damage to their back line but there's absolutely nothing wrong especially in the later stages of the game for just grabbing some more percent mitigations to stack on top of your passive percent mitigations to stack on top of your three damage mitigations you'll basically be taking no damage meanwhile your thorns isn't affected basically by any of that crap so you're still getting all of the efficacy out of thorns guys and that is our osiris guy